Hello and welcome everyone. I am Jadil Sanya and in this video we are going to do the post contest analysis of our weekly coding contest. So before starting this session I would like to wish everyone a very happy Diwali. I hope everyone is doing well and enjoying a lot in this festival. Okay. And uh, let's keep a target of 50 likes in this video for all of you who have participated in this contest although it was Diwali and although uh, this was a festival, right? So let's hit the target of 50 likes in this video and those of you are currently watching this video ek like to banta hai is video ke liye kyunki aap log diwali ke din bhi apne aap ko upskill karne mein zyada interested ho then that's a very good thing right so without any delay let's start the session okay so one by one i'll be providing the uh, solution and i'll be explaining how to solve each and every question okay so we'll be starting with the first question and the name of the question is who has the majority Okay, the question is very easy to understand. It has the, it does not have any uh, complex algorithm or any complexity uh, in thinking or intuition. Okay, so let's start. Uh, let's read the problem statement. So in this question, you will be given an array of size n and two elements x and y will be given to you. So what you have to do, you have to find the element which is occurring more number of times than the other. So basically two elements and find how many times each of them is occurring and you have to find which element is occurring more than uh, higher number of times. Okay. If both X and Y are occurring equal number of times, then return the smaller of them. Fine. And a note has been mentioned that we need to return the element. Uh, we, we need to return the element, not its count because basically the element needs to be returned and not the count of the element. Fine. So let's take this example and let's try to solve this example so over here n is equal to 11 right and the array elements are 1 1 double 2 double 3 and 4 is occurring 4 times and 5 so x is equal to 4 and 5 y is equal to 5 so basically for x and y you have to find out how many times they are occurring so let's find out how many times x is occurring i can see uh, 4 4 is occurring how many times 4 times and how many times y is occurring how many times this 5 is occurring i can see only 5 is occurring once so the question is saying that you have to find the element that is occurring more number of times. So obviously 4 is occurring 4 times and 5 is occurring only once. So I can see the frequency of 4 is 4 and the frequency of 5 is only 1. So which is occurring more number of times? Obviously 4 is occurring 4 number of times and that is greater one, right? So in the output you have to print the element, not its count according to this note. So the output comes out to be 4 for this example number 1. Okay, and let's have a look at the second example as well. So over here n is equal to 8, n elements, 8 elements will be there. And x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 7. So let's find out the frequency of x. So I can see uh, 1 is occurring only once and let's find out the frequency of this 7. 7 is also occurring only once. So both of them are having frequency 1. So in this case, there is a statement mentioned over here that if both x and y are occurring equal number of times, then you have to return the smaller of them, basically return the smaller element among x and y. Okay, so x is occurring only once and y is also occurring only once. Smaller one between 1 and 7 is 1. Hence the output comes out to be 1. Right, the explanation also says that same thing. Frequency of 1 and 7 is 1 and smaller one is 1. So output comes out to be this. It comes out to be 1. Okay, so the constraint over here, let's have a look at the constraint. n is equal to... 10 to the power 3 it can be as large as 10 to the power 3 and the array elements x y and the ith element can be as large as 10 to the power 8 okay so let's try to uh, solve one of the test case now let's say if n is equal to uh, 5 and the array elements given to you are let's say 1 1 2 2 and 3 so there are five elements let's say the value of x is equal to 2 and the value of y is equal to 1 so you have to find out the frequency of x and y. So I can see frequency of 2 in this array is equivalent to 2 and the frequency of uh, y that is 1 is equivalent to 2. Both of them are having same frequency but output says that you have to print the element which is occurring less number of times. So I can see uh, which is the smallest one. I can see the smaller one is equivalent to 1 hence the output for this test case comes out to be 1. Fine. So what I can do? Basically, first of all, you need to find out the frequency. Just find out the frequency, keep two variables. As I mentioned, f of x and you can have f of y. Just iterate over the entire array while iterating. 
if the element is equivalent to x increase f of x or increase f of y and then just you have to compare the value of f of x and f of y so if f of x is greater than f of y then obviously the output is x if f of y is lesser than f of x so basically this uh, basically let's see if f of y is greater than f of x and what you have to do you have to print y and if both of them are equal then you have to return the smaller one according to the question right so basically you have to check if x is lesser than y then what you have to do then you have to return x else you have to return y so these are the three things which you need to uh, for the comparison of the frequencies right so the question is pretty simple the first one let's have a look at the coding implementation for this same okay so the coding is all the coding implementation i have done over here is in java but the same can be implemented in other languages fine so int count of x is equal to 0 and count of y so this is the frequency of x and y now i have iterated over the entire array i is equal to 0 till i is lesser than n now if array of i is equal to x i am increasing count of x else if array of i is equivalent to y i am increasing the count of y okay and at the end i am just checking the frequency if count of x is greater than count of y whoever is having higher frequency that will be returned now if count of y is greater then y will be returned and else at the end i'll be checking if both of them are having same frequency then the smaller one will be returned over here fine let's try to compile and run let's see what is the compilation are we getting any compilation error no compilation error is given and let's try to submit this this solution will be accepted yeah the problem has been successfully submitted so the question was pretty simple and let's have an analysis of the time and space complexity. The time complexity of this approach comes out to be order of n and the space complexity is constant in this scenario because we are only using the variables, right? So now let's quickly move towards the uh, second question that is nearest perfect square, okay? So this question is also pretty easy and the uh, difficulty level mentioned over here also states easy, okay? So a simple... Uh, thinking on the test cases is required over here. So let's uh, have a look at the problem statement. So in this question, you are given a number n and you have to find the perfect square that is nearest to it. If two perfect squares are at the same distance to n, then print the greater perfect square. Okay, so you have to find out the nearest perfect square. So let's have a look at the example number two so that we can understand actually what the question is trying to say, right? So n is equal to 56 and let's try to find out the solution for n is equal to 56. Let's move towards this. Okay. So now let's say n is equal to 56. Okay. So now we have to find out the nearest perfect square. First of all, what is a perfect square? What is a perfect square? Anyone? Yes, perfect square is if I say 2 into 2, I can get 4. If I say 3 into 3, I can get 9. If I say 4 into 4, what I'll be getting? I'll be getting 16. If I say 5 into 5, that will be 25. Right? So all these numbers, uh, all these numbers, 4, 9, 16 and 25, all of them are called as perfect squares. Okay? So they are called the perfect squares. So now we have to find out the nearest perfect square, which is the nearest perfect square to 56. Okay, let's write down a few more for perfect squares. 6 into 6 will be 36 and 7 into 7 will be 49. 8 into 8 will be 64 and 9 into 9 will be 81 and 10 into 10 will be 100 obviously, right? So now you have to find out the nearest perfect square. So let's take 56. So which is the range in which 56 will lie. So, which is the perfect square which is smaller than 56? I can see 49, right? 7 into 7, 14 is smaller than 56. And which perfect square is greater than 56? I can see 64, 8 eights are 64, right? So, I can see I have two perfect squares, 56 and 64. But which is the nearest one? So, let's try to find out the, I mean, sorry, the six, uh, 49 and 49 and 64, right? So let's write down the uh, difference, like what is the distance between 56 and 49. So this will be around 7, right? And what is the distance between 64 and 56? So this distance comes out to be around 
so that would be around 4 plus 4 that would be around 8 right so the output for this test case uh, the distance will be equivalent to 8 right so one perfect square is at 7 distance and another one is at uh, distance 8 so which is the nearest one i can see obviously 7 this one 49 so out output comes out to be 49 for this test case i hope you understood okay and let's have a look at the uh, output as well output is 49 Okay, so you have to find out the nearest perfect square. I hope you understood everything about the question. And let's have a look at the uh, constraint. So constraint says that the value of n can lie in the range 1 to 10 to the power 14. It can be as large as 10 to the power 14. The number 10 to the power 14 suggests that uh, long long or long data type needs to be used. If you are using C++ then long long. If you are using Java then long data type. Because 10 to the power 14 can only be... Uh, handled by long long or long data type right so now how to find the uh, what is the algorithm to find out the answer let's let's say to analyze it so what i can do so first of all i need to find out the nearest perfect square right so first of all i need to know that which is the perfect square lying on the left hand side and the right hand side there can be only two position position for the perfect square it, it can either lie it can be either lesser than 56 it can be either greater than 56 but what can be the value what is the value how to find the value so what i'll be doing i'll be first of all finding the square root of 56 so square root of 56 what is the square root of 56 it is somewhat around 7.4 right so uh, square root of 56 is around 7.48 okay fine so what i will do what i'll do in order to find the smaller square smaller perfect square in order to find the perfect square lying on the left hand side that is the smaller perfect square and larger perfect square so smaller perfect square will be nothing but if i take the floor value of this 7.48 so i'll get the smaller perfect square okay so smaller number will be 7 and the larger number basically the square root the larger will be the seal value of this 48 it will be the ceiling value that is 7.48 seal value will be equivalent to 8 now the smaller perfect square will be 7 into 7 that will be 49 and the uh, larger perfect square will be 8 into 8 that will be 64 okay so i got two values one is 64 and the uh, another one is 49 so i got two values right so in this manner i can find out the smaller and larger perfect square i just need to find out the square root of the number I get a value just get the floor and the seal value so ceiling and the floor value will provide me the larger and the smaller perfect square now just uh, do the subtraction just find out the distance between them so 56 minus 14 and that comes out to be around 7 and the distance between this part that is uh, 56 and 64 that comes out to be what it comes out to be around 8 right so whichever is the smaller one take that perfect square fine so this is how I can solve this question. If you want uh, me to take one more example, let me explain you with one more example. Let's take 68 instead of uh, 60, uh, 56. Let's say this is the test case number 2. And let's say n is equal to 68. So first thing what we need to do. First thing is the square root of the number. Square root of 68. What will be the square root of 68? Let's have a look. Let's find out the square root so that would be square root of 68 comes out to be what it comes out to be 8.24 it comes out to be 8.24 right so the next step next step is to find out the smaller and larger perfect square is to find out the smaller and larger one right so smaller will be what it will be first of all you need to find out what you need to find out the floor value of 8.24 the floor value of 8.24 comes out to be 8 right and smaller perfect square will be the square of 8 8 8 is 64 and larger will be seal value 8.24 that comes out to be 9 and that would be 9 into 9 that is 81 so i got two values smaller and larger 64 and 81 now let's say to find out the distance between them so first of all i'll do 68 minus 64 that would come that comes out to be 4 Right? it comes out to be 4 and now let's say to find out 81 minus 68 so 68 plus 2 that would be 70 so that would be 2 plus 1 3 plus 10 that would be around 13 so the distance comes out to be 30 
right so which is the smaller one i can say obviously this is the smaller one hence the output comes out to be what it comes out to be 64 so the output for this test case comes out to be 64 it is the nearest one nearest perfect square right i hope you understood everything these are the steps of the algorithm first find the square root then find out the smaller and larger square root so get the floor and the seal value and then just find out the distance between smaller and larger one compare it with the in uh, input number n and let's have a look at the uh, implementation part so the implementation part again in java but the same can be implemented in other languages right so a nearest square right so the value of i have used one variable right smaller and larger so what i have done i have just found out the square root of n and if i find the floor value that is the smaller number and if i take the seal value that is the larger number right now what i'll be doing i'll be finding out the distance between the larger and smaller perfect square so what i did i multiplied the value smaller into smaller that gives me the perfect square and i just took the absolute difference between n and the smaller perfect square and i just type casted it to, uh, into long so s distance and l distance larger perfect square distance smaller perfect square distance and if i find that the smaller distance s distance is lesser than the l distance if it is nearer then i'll be uh, returning the smaller perfect square else I'll be returning the larger perfect square and also it has been mentioned that if both of them are at the same distance then you have to print the greater perfect square right so I'm just returning the larger perfect square right so now let's say to submit this solution as well and let's see the acceptancy and this solution was also uh, accepted right the uh, solution was successfully accepted so uh, just try to figure out the time and space complexity the time and space complexity comes out to be constant it won't be a, uh, taking much time right so and the space complexity also comes out to be constant in this scenario right so this was the second question nearest perfect square very easy mm, not that much of brainstorming is required right now the third question i found the third question to be pretty much interesting so let's have a brainstorming let's try to understand what this question is trying to say <clears throat> i hope you guys are with me right so just pay attention now the questions are a little bit interesting you will try to uh, you will be understanding a lot in this questions right okay and this third question was one of my favorite question like i enjoyed solving this question okay so geek and geekina purchasing the ice cream okay so let's try to read the problem statement uh, a restaurant has n ice creams each ice cream has some flavor uh, represented by a of y okay so geek and geekina want to pick ice creams uh, with the same flavor both of them want the ice cream with the same flavor but they want them to be at least k distance k, k indices apart from each other that is if i and j are indices of ice creams picked by geek and geekina respectively then modulo then the distance between i and j should be greater than or equal to k yeah, this should be true for each and every pair which you have picked okay and you have to find out the number of ways they can order the ice cream find out the number of ways they can order the ice cream okay so geek and geekina they went to the ice cream shop and the ice cream shop has n number of ice creams and the flavor of each and every ice cream is mentioned by a of i now both of them want the same same type of ice cream basically they want the same flavor of the ice cream but the condition is that both of them both the ice creams should be k distance apart at least k distance apart okay this difference of their indexes should be at least k that is what the question is trying to say now let's have a look at this example one to get a clear understanding in our mind let's just copy it and let's have a look at over over here okay yeah so over here in this question n is equal to 5 there are 5 ice creams and k is equal to 2 both of the at least the minimum distance should be k right and what is array of i is equal to 1 2 2 1 and 2 okay fine so now what we need to do we have to find out how many different pairs uh, are possible okay how many different pairs of ice cream are possible and both of them are going to take the same flavor let's set out right let's try to find out different pairs possible okay so this is one of the pair and let's write down the index 0 1 2 3 and 4 one of the pair possible is 0 comma 3 the other pair possible is 1 comma 4 and 2 comma 4 
okay, 1 comma 4 and 2 comma 4. And now we need to verify whether this pairs are valid or not because it has been mentioned that the uh, distance should be at least k between both the ice creams. Okay, so what is the distance of 3 and 0? So 3 minus 0 will be equivalent to 3. Is it greater than or equal to k? Yes, absolutely, greater than or equal to k. Fine. And what is the distance 4 minus 1 that is equivalent to 3? Greater than or equal to k? Yes, obviously. 4 minus 2 is equivalent to what? It, it is equivalent to 2. Is it greater than or equal to k? Yes, absolutely. So I found three different pairs and hence the output for this test case comes out to be what? It comes out to be 3. Let's verify it. Yes, obviously the output comes out to be 3, right? Let's have a look at the second example as well to get a clear understanding. So the second example says, let's copy this again. Yeah. Okay, fine. Let's have a look at the test cases. So n is equal to 4 and k is equal to 1 and the array elements are, all of them are 1. Okay. This is 0, 1, 2 and 3. Okay, so now the distance mentioned over here, the value of k is equivalent to 1. So all the uh, elements should be at least like k distance apart, right? So how many pairs are possible? k distance apart pairs. So this is k distance, this is k distance, k distance, right? So that would be 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Another one is 1, 2, 1, 3. And the other one, another one is 2, 3. Now we need to verify. I just chose the elements which are same. Okay, I chose only the pairs which are same. And now I need to verify whether they are at k distance apart or not. So is it k distance apart, at least k distance apart? Yes, because 1 minus 0 will be 1. 2 minus 0 will be 2, k distance apart. 3 minus 0, yes. 2 minus 1, yes. 3 minus 1, that would be 2, greater than k, yes. 3 minus 2, that will be equivalent to 1, greater than, uh, it is greater than k, right? I mean, equal to k. So how many pairs? 3 plus 3, 6 pairs. Hence the output for this test case comes out to be what? It comes out to be, uh, it comes out to be 6, fine. Let's have a look at the answer. What is the answer which we are getting? Yes, absolutely 6. Okay, so now let's try to think how we can solve this question. But let's have a look at the constraint. So the array can be as large as 10 to the power of 5. Okay, and the value of k can be as large as 10 to the power of 5. Okay, fine. And the array elements, it can be as large as 10 to the power 6. Okay, got it. Right. So now, how to solve this question? Let's try to understand the approach. Okay. This is the approach number one. I'll uh, share two different approaches. Okay. So what is the approach number one? So one thing that comes into my mind is that after uh, looking at this question, I can see I Simply, first of all, if I know how many pairs are there, you know, how many uh, pairs of elements I can find, which are same, basically, which are having same values, then from that, I can check whether this, this is a valid pair or not. Okay, so let me copy this test case and let me explain uh, with the help of this test case. So now what I will do, I will find out the frequencies of each and every element. Like basically, I'll try, I'll write down the indexes where each and every element is present. So now let's try to find out where what are the play positions where one is present? What are the positions where one is present? So one is present at the index number zero and index number three. Now, what are the positions where two is present? So two is present at which indexes? Two is present at the index number one, two, and the last one is equal to four. So now what I can do in order to find the answer? No, I can iterate over this indexes. I can iterate over the indexes of each and every element and I can find out how many pairs are having distance k, how many pairs are having distance k. Okay, so 0 and 3, I can make a pair and I will find the distance 3 minus 0 greater than or equal to 2 over here the k is equal to 2. Yes, absolutely. So I'll increase the answer variable. Let's assume that I have an answer variable. So I'll increase the value of answer variable. Similarly, now I'll iterate over this indices of uh, number 2, right? And now while iterating, I can see 1, 2. Is it uh, 2, 1 is equal to 1? Is it greater than or equal to 2? That is k. No, 
So I'll not include it. I'll not increase the answer variable. So let's try to find out one comma four. So basically nested for loop. From now, uh, from this you might have guessed that we are using nested for loop. It is greater than or equal to k. Yes, absolutely. So I'll increase the value of answer variable. Now one more pair is remaining. That is two comma four. Right? What is the distance? Four comma two is equivalent to two, and it is greater than or equal to two. Yes. So increase the answer variable, and this comes out to be this becomes three. Answer variable becomes three now, right? So in this manner, I can find the answer. Okay. So what I did, I just found the indexes of each and every array element, and then I am iterating over the list of indexes of every array element, and increasing the value of answer. But now the drawback is the time complexity of this approach. What is the time complexity? Try to uh, try to think about the time complexity. Okay. Yes, if you have guessed the guess that we are using nested for loop, then nested for loop will take n square time. Absolutely, it's correct. If you have a look at the example number two, test case number two, in the test case number two, what was the scenario? Every array element was equal. Yes, if let's say test case two, if some uh, test case, worst case test case occurs, let's say n is equal to five and k is equal to one, and the array elements are similar. All the array elements are same. Now, in this scenario, what will my uh, list of indexes look like? It will look something like this. It will contain all the elements: zero, one, two, three, and four. These are the indexes, right? Now, over here, if you try to find out all the pairs, no, basically you need a nested for loop. Basically, that is similar to uh, finding out each and every pair of the array. Right, so this finding out the answer for these indexes will take around n square iterations. The outer for loop and inner for loop will be required. Right, so this solution will take around n square time complexity. And if you uh, take a look at the constraint, n can be as large as ten to the power five, and it is a very huge number. Right, n square of that will be ten to the power five into ten to the power five, ten to the power ten iterations, and not feasible in one second. You cannot. Your solution will not get accepted. Okay, the solution will not get accepted. Okay, we need to act little bit smart. We need a better approach. Okay, so this approach fails. Let's try to uh, see what can be done. Let's try to understand what can be done. So uh, while finding the answer, no, I'll I'll show you one take and that take will be helpful to you in other scenarios as well. Okay, so let's try to discuss approach number two. So approach number two. So I have one trick in my mind, and that trick will be useful to you whenever you solve this kind of questions, like find different number of pairs and such kind of questions. Okay, so that trick is that let's say what you will be doing, you will be using the frequencies of the arrays which you have already encountered. Okay, so let's say uh, there was a scenario, there was a test case in which, or there was a question in which you have to find out total number of pairs required. So in that scenario, what you can do, you can keep the Frequencies of the elements which you have already encountered. Okay, let's say this. This was the entire array. Let me show you the bigger picture. This was the entire array. Okay, and you have already encountered this much of the array. You have already encountered this much of the array. Okay, so now what you will be doing? You have to find out how many different pairs are possible. You have to find out how many different pairs are possible, and you're currently standing at this position. Okay. Now you, what you can do? You can simply focus on if I include this element, what will be the increase in my answer? Like how many pairs will be increased if I consider this array element? So in that scenario, let let me show you. Let's say all the elements are one. Okay, all the elements are one. Now let's say this many elements were already encountered by me. This many elements are already encountered. Basically, I've iterated and I've just calculated how many pairs are possible among themselves. Now I'm currently standing at this element. Okay. Now I have to find out. Basically, I have to make some pairs. Coming back to this question, basically I have to find out different number of pairs with k is equal to one for this array, where n is equal to four and k is equal to one, and this is the array. Okay. This is just like the second example. Exactly the same example. Now over here, what I'll be doing? I'll be focusing on. Let's say my answer was something. I got something answer. I have some answer already calculated for this part. 
now what i'll do what i'll be doing i will be just considering this array element now i'll just find out if i include this array element how many pairs will be increased what will be the increase in the number of pairs so let's say i know that this one will also make a pair with this one this one will also make a pair with this one and this one will also make a pair with this one so this element if i include this element it will contribute three more pairs it will contribute three other pairs to the answer so whatever is the answer let's say it is a the answer is let's say for simplicity is equivalent to some constant x so after including this array element my answer will be increased by 3 and what is this 3 3 is the number of elements which i have already encountered 3 is the number of elements which i have already encountered let's mark this uh, one as red so how many pairs are possible one one and one okay so these are the pairs possible right these are the different ones this is the uh, other one and this is the other one okay so this one has contributed how many pairs it has contributed three pairs it has contributed the pairs equivalent to the frequency of ones which were already encountered okay so this was the thing whenever you have to find out the number of pairs just focus on if i include the current number how many pairs will be contributed how many pairs will be contributed then by that number okay so now let's uh, move towards the implementation part like basically what can be done for this scenario for this test case Okay, so let's try to find out the answer for this uh, first test case, and let's try to see how we can. I'm going to use the same thing uh, which I sh uh, showed you over here, and let's uh, understand it. Okay, so here comes the algorithm. I hope you understood the intuition. Like basically, I'm just focusing on how many pairs the ith element will contribute, how many pairs the ith element will contribute. That is the intuition. That is the. Uh, kick start to the th algorithm okay so now let's focus so i need two things i need two things i need the frequency i need the frequency of every array element so let's have let's say i have a hash map or something a map or something to keep the track of the frequencies okay in this scenario you can use an frequency array as well let's have a look at the size i mean the largest array possible is uh, array element is 10 to the power 6 so it will be feasible in some languages it might give some errors but let's uh, keep it yeah, let's go with the map okay so a map of integer to integer okay key and uh, value will be integer and integer now what i'll do i will start iterating over the entire array i will start the iteration over this array but there is one thing i will not start the iteration from the zeroth index i will start the iteration from the kth index and the reason is that i need the elements to be k distance apart at least k distance it can be larger than k but it needs to be at least k distance so i am starting the iteration from k now what i'll be doing now let me show you a larger picture again so over here in this part let's say this is i minus k basically the distance this is the k distance and this is my ith element currently uh, i am standing at this position location okay my currently the pointer i is over here so what I will do, I will find out how many, what is the frequency of the elements present in this part. I'll try to find out the frequency. I will store the frequency of the elements which is present on the left hand side of i minus k distance. Okay. And now if this element was already present in the frequency area, then that means whatever is the frequency of this current element, the ith element, that many pairs will be contributed by him that many pairs will be contributed by the ith element. This picture will give you a broader idea. So let me keep it over here. So now I'll start the iteration from k. So what is the value of i? So i will be equivalent to k and k is equivalent to 2. I have a map, frequency map, okay? So now I will find out the, what is the element at i minus kth distance. i minus kth distance, the element at i minus k distance is equivalent to 1. If that element is not present inside the frequency map, I will add the element and I will keep the frequency as one initially. Now, what I'll do, I'll check how many pairs will be contributed by the ith element. So for that, I will have one more variable that is answer variable. Okay. So now if this element is already present inside your map, this is your map. Okay. 
so i will just take the frequency of that element and add it to the answer variable but this freq but this two is not present inside the map so i it will not contribute anything uh, to the answer right so now let's move ahead let's uh, start with the second element so now your i will be pointing to this element i started the iteration from here from i is equal to 2 now i minus k will be what it will be equivalent to this it will be equivalent to 1 i minus k that is 3 minus 2 will be equivalent to 1 now i will be first of all putting this element inside the frequency array that is frequency map so 2 will be 1 now i'll check whether this element is already present how many pairs will be contributed by 1 i can see it is already present inside the map hence how many pairs will be contributed only one whatever is the frequency just add it to the answer whatever is the frequency just add it to the answer that many frequent that many pairs will be contributed by the i th element now let's move the value of i forward so moving the value of i forward so i minus k will also move ahead right so what will be the i minus k i is equal to 4 4 minus 2 will be equivalent to 2 this is your i minus k right so first of all increase the value of this i minus uh, the element 2 inside the frequency map so increase it by 1 that will be now 2 now find out how many pairs will be contributed by the i th element if this element is already inside the map that many pairs will be contributed right with both different two it will make a pair okay basically it will make a pair with this two and it will make a pair with this two so whatever is the frequency just add it to the answer so just add 2 to the answer 2 plus 1 that will be equivalent to 3 now move the value of i forward and now nothing is present afterward so you have iterated over the entire array and that's it just print the value of the answer variable answer variable says 3 and that is the total count of pairs that will be k distance apart okay fine i hope you got the idea how to solve this question so let me just give you an idea about how the algorithm looks like okay so let's have a look at the algorithm okay i'm just writing down the algorithm so you guys can uh, if you are coding in other different languages then it will help you a lot right so first of all what i need i need a map i need a map let me use a different color let's go with green right so i need a map both the uh, pairs will be int int now i will be finding the frequency but before that i will be iterating i'll be starting the iteration from i is equal to k to i is lesser than n i is equal to k to i is lesser than n fine now what i'll do first of all i'll find out the element at i minus k at position so i will increase the frequency increase the frequency of the element array of i minus k okay and the second step is to find out how many pairs will be contributed by the ith element so just i have one more variable in the first step you will let's say i have one more variable that is answer variable so just increase answer plus just find out the frequency of array of i this is over here ith element just see how many pairs will be contributed by the ith element just increase the value of answer and the last last what you need to do just print or return the value of the answer variable a pretty easy and pretty simple uh, approach and the time complexity over here you can observe a single iteration it comes out to be order of n right so the time complexity is order of n the space complexity in worst scenario it can be around order of n assuming that all the array elements are different so map will be equivalent to the size of the array right so the time and space complexity can be order of n i hope you understood everything right so let's have a look at the coding implementation part okay so here is the coding implementation so now over here this is the hash map the frequency okay and this is my answer variable now i have started the iteration from kth position and will be going to i is less than n so now the first step is to increase the frequency of the element at the k minus i minus kth position okay i minus kth position okay so i'm just using using the inbuilt function map dot put i'll put the frequency of a of i minus k if that element is not present this get or default method if the element is present it will fetch the well frequency of a of i minus k if the uh, element a of i minus k is not present it will take the default frequency default value as 0 and it will just add the 
add plus one to it. Okay. So this is the uh, increase the frequency part, part one of the uh, i minus k part. Okay. And the second part is how many pairs will ith element contribute? It will contribute the total number of pairs equivalent to the frequency which I have already encountered for the ith element. So I'm just getting the frequency of ith element. It is possible the ith element is encountered for the first time and map does not contain it, right? So in that scenario, I need to return zero. So map get or default will do the rest of the part. If it is present, then it will fetch the frequency. If it is not present, it will return zero over here. And at the end, just return the value of the answer variable. Isn't it very interesting? The uh, logic is pretty small, like basically, but it has got uh, thinking in background, right? So let's try to submit this and let's see the acceptance. Here. And we can see that the sub, uh, solution has been successfully submitted. And yeah, so let's have a look at the last question of this contest. Yeah, this is the last question of the contest. And this is uh, fest and posters. Okay, so basically uh, there is a fest going on uh, in Geeks school. And what you have to do basically for this fest advertisement, basically the advertisement of the fest, you, the school needs some number of posters represented by now. Okay, the last question. Uh, we need num number of posters for the festival which is going on in Geeks school. So Geeks class is appointed to make all the posters for the fest. Class has n students and each student can make one poster in some amount of time that will be represented by an integer array that is called as time and the length of that array is n. So now every student will start making the second poster as soon as he or she gets the uh, gets finished with the first one and so on. Basically, if one one of the poster is finished by me, I'll quickly start and doing without without any delay. I will start with the second poster. So no gap between the first poster making and the second poster making. Okay. So now what you need to do, you need to find the minimum amount of time so that all the students together have made at least num number of posters you have to find a minimum amount of time required so that all the students together have made at least num basically you have to find out for the entire class okay what is the minimum time required at least they have a uh, num number of posters ready okay this is not for any individual student okay so let's have a look at the example number one and this question is also simple it has got a little bit of thinking and if you just figure out, okay, so this is the thing which you can do and it's just done. So n is equal to four and how many posters? 10 posters are required. The time error says two, three, one and four. So now let's copy this test case and let's try to solve this. Okay. So the value of n is equal to four. The value of num is equivalent to 10 and the array time contains two, three, one, and four. Okay, so these are the time. This is the time taken by every student. Okay, so let me write down the index. Index, let's say index one, two, three, and four. Just for explanation part, I have mentioned one, two, three, and four. Okay? Because it, it, it denotes a student. Zeroth student, it won't sound good. One st first student, it sounds okay, right? So now this is time array. So let's try to find out what is the time taken. So time array. And let's try to find out how many posters each and every student will make and what is the total time taken. Okay, so now what I will be doing, how many posters are required? So let's try to find out the answer. 10 posters are required. Okay, fine. And how many students are there? Four. Four. And let's say if every student makes three posters, no. Just I know four divided by 10, 10 divided by four will give you around two, but I need at least 10 posters. So let's say, uh, this uh, this answer comes out to be two so let's say increase it by one and let's say every student will make three posters okay so count of poster for everyone comes out to be three so this is the first student third uh, second third and fourth time taken by every student student one student two student three and student four now i'm just calculating what is the total time required if every student makes uh, three posters so let's say three twos are six over here three threes are nine three threes are uh, one threes are three and over here four threes are 12. So total time, see every student is working at the same time. Okay, so over here, see every student is uh, working simultaneously. Okay, so uh, at the same time, all the students are working, but the time taken by every student is different. Okay, so what is the total time taken? See, 
the maximum will be the total time taken because every student is working and the last student completes at 12 units right so the total time taken over here in this scenario comes out to be 12 right so can we do better than this can we take minimum amount of time so over here the output comes out to be 6 okay so th that is the minimum amount of time you have to find out the minimum amount of time so we can do better than 12 as well so let's say what i'll do instead of giving uh, let's say 3 to every student what i'll do if i do in a different manner so what i'll do i will be not assigning 3 to every student so i'll keep the track of one of the answers so answer 1 comes out to be 12 so what i'll do i will provide the first student 3 the third uh, second student also 3 the f a third student let's say he makes four posters and the last one let's say how many 4 plus 3 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 4 2s are 8 or and the last one let's say uh, is given 2 so what is the total count of posters made that will be 3 plus 3 6 6 plus 4 that will be around 10 and 10 plus 2 will be equivalent to 12 so what is the time taken in this scenario 4 2s are 8 4 1s are 4 3 3s are 9 and 3 2s are 6 Okay, so what is the maximum total time taken? Maximum total time taken in this scenario is equivalent to 9. But can we do better than this? Let's try to find out something better. See, this is taking much time. So what I'll do? So 9, 9 is larger one, right? So I will try to reduce it a little bit. So let's not assign the, this is the first, second, third and fourth. Let's not assign, let's not assign uh, three posters to this one. So let's assign two posters to this one, okay? So who will do the other rest post poster? Let's say this person will do. So what is the count over here? Now five ones are five. And this is the updated total time taken. Three twos are six and three twos are six, right? So this is the total time taken and the total time yet is not lesser than uh, eight. It is equivalent to eight yet again, right? So what I'll do, the total count yet, again, it is equivalent to uh, 3 plus 2, 5, 5, 5 plus 5, 5 and 12. The total posters made by uh, the class is equivalent to 12. But now I need lesser amount of time. So what I'll do, if I give the uh, fourth student only one poster, so the time taken will be reduced, but the one poster will be done by whom? Let's say it will be done by the third student. So third student will do six posters. So time taken over here will be six and over here it will be not eight. It will be equivalent to four. Right, so now the updated total time will be this. It will be six, six and four. And this will do only one poster. So again, now let's calculate how many posters are done. Six plus three, nine, 10 in a 11 and 12. And what is the total time taken? The maximum value over here you can observe is equivalent to six. So over here, what is the minimum answer I which I got? The minimum answer which I got is equivalent to six. Now if I try to reduce this is it possible to reduce this more how will i reduce it let's say uh, the minimum maximum answer which i got was with this one okay and this is the minimum total time taken by any of the student i student uh, there is no one who will be taking zero amount of time so the answer cannot be lesser than six the answer will be equivalent to six for this test case i hope you understood everything about the test case like basically what we have to do, we have to find out the minimum time taken by the class to prepare the poster and the output for the test case comes out to be 6 and this is how we can calculate it, okay, time and count. So basically you have to, uh, we have to like basically play around with the count of the posters made by every student. If you play around with the count of posters, you will figure out that what is the minimum total time that will be taken, okay. So let's have a look at the uh, second test case, example number two, n is equal to one and num is equivalent to five. Okay, so let's try to sol solve the second example as well. Test case number two, n is equivalent to five, right? n is equivalent to one, num is equivalent to five, okay? n is equivalent to one and the num is equivalent to five and the array, basically the time, the time array is equivalent to what it contains only one student so it takes one so let's try to find out let's do the same thing over here time of i into total time time of i into count okay fine so let's find out time this is one and let's say how many posters every only one student so 
obviously has to make all the posters so total time time taken is going is equivalent to 5 right so it cannot be lesser than this 5 so output comes out to be 5 for this test case okay i hope you understood everything and now let's have a look at the constraint so constraint says 10 to the power 5 the value of array and the number of uh, let's say how many posters it can be as large as 10 to the power 7 and the array can be as large as 10 to the power 7 the time taken by any of the ith student can be as large as 10 to the power 7 okay so if you are focusing on using any n square approach it is not going to work okay so how we can solve this so in order to solve this no as i said we need to play around with the value of this count variable we have to play around with the value of this count variable so how we can play around with the value of the count variable so if we focus on the total time taken no if we try to assume that this is the minimum time taken and uh, in this minimum time each and every student how many posters will they make okay so let me uh, let me show you what i am trying to say okay so if this is the uh, entire test case no and let me copy this as well yeah so i am saying that we need to play around with the answer let's say i am just guessing that the answer for this test case is equivalent to let's say total time is equivalent to 7 okay i'm just guessing it if you guess around with the total time no you can find out the count of the posters made by each and every student i'm saying that the time taken minimum time taken for this answer can be equivalent to 7 Okay, so how many posters which uh, will each and every student make? So I'm saying that total time taken it cannot be larger than seven. It can be lesser than or equal to seven. Over here, so how many posters will every student make? So I need to find out this count. So seven divided by two, integer value three point five. Obviously, point five poster cannot be done, right? So that would be around three. Over here, seven divided by three, two. Basically, I'm finding the count. So just take the time, uh, time of five divided, uh, total time divided by time of five will give you a count. Right? Basic mathematics. So seven divided by one will be equivalent to seven. We will be making seven and four. Seven divided by four, it will be equivalent to one. Right. So what is the count of the uh, this posters made? So that would be seven plus three, ten, and this will be around thirteen. So is the count greater than num? Is this thirteen greater than? required number of posters absolutely yes so total time 7 is valid answer so 7 can be the candidate for answer i am just writing down which are the candidates of the answer so 7 can be the candidate of the answer but i need to find the minimum one so what i will do i will take a value which is lesser than 7 i'll say that minimum time is not 7 it can be lesser than 7 so what can be lesser than what can be lesser than 7 Lesson get lesser than seven. Let's say I'm assuming it. It can be six. Every student, like basically, uh, this is the minimum total time. Okay. So what is the count? I need to check whether everyone will be able to make entire class will be able to make num number of posters or not. So six divided by two, three. Okay. So over here three. Six divided by three, two. Six divided by one, six. And four. Six divided by four. That will be one. So now I need to check every student. Are we getting at least Ten posters, six plus three, nine plus one, ten and twelve. Yes, absolutely. This value is greater than ten. So our requirement was of ten, and now this requirement is complete. So candidate can be six. Now my answer, I can say it. It is not seven. It can be six. I got a smaller answer. No. Basically, what is your task? Your task is to find the minimum time required, right? <clears throat> That is your answer. Minimum time required. Now let's try to say. I, I don't know six. I can can I do it in lesser time? Can I do it in uh, five units? So let's say everyone has time only five, only till five. So five divided by two that will be equivalent to two integer value. Ah, uh, five divided by three that will be equivalent to one, and this will be five and four. Five divided by four one. So what is the count? Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, no, this nine requirement nine is not our requirement. Our requirement is ten. This is not valid. We are not fulfilling the requirement of posters. Hence, the total time cannot be lesser than six. Okay, it is six. Minimum time required is six, but not lesser than six is possible. If it is not possible with five, obviously it is not possible with four, right? So how to play around with the time? So basically, if you know the best algorithm to find the answer, no. that is binary search algorithm you can apply binary search algorithm and you can play around with the time so you might be saying that okay 
binary search algorithm okay so what will be the range we need left and right range in binary search algorithm right so i can justify that the left range can be one okay and can also justify what can be the right range what can be the maximum output possible so let's try to figure out what can be the smallest answer possible see let's uh, have a look at the constraint these are the constraints right let's copy it over here let's paste it okay let's take the uh, test scenario let's take the smallest test case okay this is the smallest test case p1s okay so n is equal to 1 in that scenario and num is equivalent to 1 right? and the time array it also contains one so basically one poster one student and that student takes only one unit of time hence the output can be one in this scenario right so the minimum answer possible can be what it can be one hence the left range can be one i am not sure about the range but i need the range for the entire uh, problem statement according to this constraint so i'll think in term of the entire question not simply in terms of a simple test case this range will be valid which we are trying to find right now it will it will be valid for any test case following this constraint okay now this is valid right do you guys agree with me that l can be as small as 1 it cannot be lesser than 1 obviously so this is the answer range in which uh, basically the minimum time on which will be uh, just applying the binary search now what can be the maximum value let's say to find out t1 l that is the largest test case so in the largest test case let's say n is equal to 1 only one student num is equivalent to maximum value 10 to the power 7 oh my god and time time of i maximum value 10 to the power 7 okay fine so what can be the answer for this one student takes 10 to the power 7 and how many posters are required so how many posters are required any one only one student and how many posters do i need i need 10 to the power 7 posters so what is the total time taken 10 to the power 14 right this is the minimum time taken in the worst case scenario 10 to the power 14 hence the output for this comes out to be 10 to the power 14 right so the uh, right value can be as large as 10 to the power 14 so i can apply binary search on this value that is the minimum total time and i will just iterate over the entire array just like this one just like this one as we did over here just try to find a value minimum total time and then just verify whether this many posters can be built up or not okay so just iterate over the time array and just uh, find out that whether the mid value divided by time of i and keep on adding with all the values if this is equivalent to at the end greater than the value num or not okay now let me just uh, go through uh, the algorithm algorithmic part so you guys can have a clear understanding i have just uh, shown you the dry run of the algorithm just few minutes ago okay the thing which we were doing over here no the total time which we started with 7 and then we checked with 6 and then we checked with 5 that was the dry run basically i was thinking of a different answer so that same thing will be done in the algorithm but in order to find the candidate of the minimum time taken you have to use the uh, binary search algorithm okay so let's uh, have a look at the algorithm so for the algorithm what we need we need an answer variable right we need an answer variable we need the low and high basically low and left and right for the binary search that will be 10 to the power 40 low and right now the binary search algorithm right so while l is lesser than right binary search algorithm now i need to find the mid value mid value is equal to left plus right divided by 2 that can be the minimum total answer right this can be the minimum total answer right so now for this mid value i will find out whether my count of poster is greater than or equal to temp or not greater than or equal to num basically this is my requirement of posters right so i will iterate and i will have one more variable that is temporary variable which says how many posters uh, has the enter class like basically how many posters are made by the enter class okay so temp is equal to 0 and i will be iterating over every array element i is equal to 0 to i is less than n right now i will find the mid value mid is equivalent to what i already got the mid value right so not mid value uh, we we need to find out temp 
So I will add the value of posters basically made by the ith student. So what will be that value? So that will be nothing but mid divided by the time taken by the ith student. This were, these are the posters made by ith student in mid amount of time. Okay, fine. Now what I will need to do? If at any point of the time I find that the requirement is matched, basically the temp value will be greater than num. Right? If the time value is greater than num, if it is greater than the requirement, if it is greater than the requirement, then I will just break my iteration. I will just break my iteration. If I break my iteration, then what I will be doing? What I'll be doing? This is my entire for loop. The for loop ends over here. End of the for loop. This is the end of the for loop over here. For loop starts over here. The for loop ends over here. Fine. Now what I need to do, I just need to either discard the left side, left side or right side, right? So if the value of the requirement, if the requirement is not matched, basically if after iterating over everything and if the value of temp is still lesser than num, then obviously left portion needs to be discarded, right? Because all the values lesser than this mid are not going to fulfill our requirement. So left position left partition will be discarded so i'll be just going more moving towards the right partition so i'll just do l is equal to mid plus one else if the requirement is matched basically the value of temp is greater than or equal to num then what then you can just update the value of answer variable update the value of answer variable by what by mid because mid can be the answer or and afterwards what you need to do just discard the basically i need the minimum answer so discard the right portion discarding the right portion that will bring the value of mid uh, r to mid i'm just discarding i'm not going mid minus one because it is possible mid can be the final answer mid can be the final answer so i'm keeping mid as it is okay and after this here is the end of the while loop basically your binary search ends over here the binary search algorithm started over here and it ended over here and at the end just return the value of answer return the value of the answer variable that's it this is the entire algorithm okay so now let's have a look at the implementation part quickly and let's uh, uh, just complete the entire session right so let's have a look at the implementation part so the implementation is pretty simple, just a binary search algorithm. Okay. So I have used the long data type because the value of uh, the uh, 10 to the power 43, if I add over, you know, while applying the uh, finding the mid, I'm just doing addition. So it is possible it will uh, get overflow. So the uh, variable L and R are used as long and long I have taken as 10 to the power 14. Okay. And answer, answer is equal to zero. This is also long because it can be greater than 10 to the power 9, right? So while left is lesser than right, I am just finding out the mid value L plus R minus L divided by 2 just to handle the overflow in some scenario, in, in some scenario okay? I have used the counter variable or the temporary variable. Just iterate over the entire array and find out whether how many uh, posters are made by the ith student. So that would be added to count and if count at some point is greater than num, just break the entire for loop not required to iterate over the rest of the part right now if the count is not matching the requirement it is lesser than num then just discard the left partition just move the l to mid plus one because that cannot cannot can never be the answer if it is not the scenario if the requirement is matching then just update the value of answer to mid and just discard the right portion because i want the minimum answer so r is taken back to mid Right. And at the end, just return the value of answer variable. That's it. Now let's try to just submit the solution and let's see if we get acceptance. Yes, the problem was successfully submitted. I hope uh, it was clear to everyone. So that was it for in this video. And if you really enjoyed this solution and if you really enjoyed my explanation, then do hit the like button. And do not forget, we have an aim of getting 50 likes in this video, 50 to 100. Make it greater than 100 as well, okay? So happy Diwali once again to everyone. So do comment down in the comment section. How was your contest and how many questions were you guys able to solve it? 
okay so that was it for in this video i'll be seeing you in the next video thank you for watching bye bye